unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. You are our Lord Jesus Christ, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. <laughs> Just govern all things in heaven and earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of thy people, and grant us thy peace all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. the 8th chapter of Zechariah. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, 
and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and will dwell in the mountain in the midst of midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a, a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet be old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It will be marvelous in the eyes of the remnants of the people in these days. Should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, and to seek the Lord of hosts. I won't go also. Yea, so many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and shall pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations and even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you for we have heard that God is with you. Here ended the lesson. The epistle is written in the sixth verse of the twelfth chapter of Romans. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministry. For he that teaches on teaching, for he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, persecute you, and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not my things, but condescend to men of low estate. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Saint Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. 
John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I, after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. There came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. day out there. Um, I wanted to uh, first uh, thank um, all those who took down the Christmas decorations yesterday uh, without incident. That was good. Sometimes when we, we had a few people had to get up here on the ladder and take down the garland above uh, the sanctuary there. Um, so no, no surprises. Thanks be to God. Uh, Sandy Kirkwood and Jeff Field were the co-workers, uh, co-coordinators on that. So we thank them. So we're back kind of now to the, the way the church looks throughout the rest of the year. We are now in Epiphany season, so a lot of exciting things coming up. Lent will be upon us shortly, so um, it comes in mid-February with Ash Wednesday. So I hope you guys, uh, we got an exciting year ahead, I feel. And um, that's an evidence uh, at our vestry meeting yesterday as we began crafting the budget for this year. But also we debuted something very important and I want to uh, talk about that, and that is our website. We have a new launch, a whole new website. It has now officially been launched, and so I hope you will all go and look uh, on at the website. Just do a Google search, put in our church, St. George's Anglican Church, Las Vegas, and then you can do a review, a Google review, right? 
So give us five star rating if you will. It didn't have to be about me, but you know, just we want a good review. That way, the more reviews we get, that means we become more prominent on the on the web on the web. So it's very important. And I want to thank uh, the one who stepped forward to take on this project, and that was Valerie Galante, our, our parishioner here. <laughs> now, uh, Rush and I, of course, uh, beginning of last year, you know, in the vestry, we're all hey, we got to have find somebody to to rebuild our website. He found someone, and they were very good. Uh, but you know, sometimes it helps to have somebody within the parish uh, to has that interaction with everyone, and also is familiar with the Anglican Church. And so, Bowery, God answered our prayer. We prayed about that in the nine days of prayer. It was always in this bulletin and our prayer list. So that was something very important. But I think uh, the vestry members commented after having it, seen it, and Bowery showed it, uh, gave it a ten out of a ten. So it is really good. Uh, I think you'll love it. So go check it out, give us a good review, and that will help us. So thank you, Valerie. All right, another answer to prayer is uh, we begin this Friday, this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. the orientation for the Bible Club. Good News Club starts, so we have the seven volunteers. That'll be 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so we will be entering into Eisenberg Elementary School. Talk about an answer to prayer. That is truly a miracle to be in a public school teaching Bible to public school students. And many, for many years, we had the door closed on us, but with God, all things are possible. Again, we put it out to God in prayer. We surrendered to Him, and lo and behold, thanks be to God. So we start that this uh, Friday, uh, Saturday, the orientation. We begin in the school February 2nd. So pray. Pray for the parents and the children to be so moved that they want to learn the Bible. They want to come to this class and be a part of this club. Therefore, we can also promote the church as well and get them involved in what we do here. So, God is good. All right, other things going on. Uh, yeah, we're just sleeping around here, not doing much. Oh, it's a busy church. We got a lot of great things. So the Bible studies are ongoing. I'm kind of lost here in my bulletin, but um, there we go. Uh, we have uh, the women's Bible study, men's Bible study, or the adult Bible study on Sundays. Also, um, social engagement ministry continues. Um, inquirers class uh, will be meeting this Friday as well. So a lot of great things going on. Um, pay attention, if you can, for upcoming announcements. We do have our diocesan senate in April. Uh, that will be representatives from our church, members who want to attend the diocesan senate. We'll explain more about that in the upcoming newsletter and at announcements, too. So I hope you can go. They'll be in Walnut Creek, California, this year. So, all right, if you please stand. <laughs>
the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Well, here we are on the second Sunday uh, after Epiphany. Now, the season of Epiphany is a wonderful season, and Epiphany means the manifestation of God, the incarnate Son of Jesus Christ. And so the very second person of the Holy Trinity is now being, is being made manifest to the entire world, not only to the Jewish people, but to the, all of humanity. And so in this wonderful account from St. Mark, in his Gospel, we have Jesus Christ, uh, this theophany, this manifestation, not only of the incarnate Son, but also a pure, a, a beautiful illustration or perfect revelation of the Holy Trinity being revealed to mankind. So what do we have here? We have uh, Jesus as he's being baptized. He goes down into the waters and he comes up. And St. John the Baptist records that you have all three persons active of the Holy Trinity in this act. You had the Father speaking. You had God incarnate going down to the waters of baptism. You also had the Holy Spirit descending as a dove. All three persons of the Holy Trinity are made manifest. So those who say there is no such thing as the, uh, the Holy Trinity, that is a clear uh, revelation that that is the case, that God is interpersonal love. There are three persons in one substance. But I think for us, we may ask ourselves, you know, what is, what, how does this apply to us today, and why is this important, this theophany manifestation of his baptism? It has everything to do with us. And it is completely, it, it, it is something that, we continually need to remind ourselves of the great gift we have been given in our baptism. Because you see, there are many people today, and you know there are fewer and fewer children or adults who are being baptized today in the world, especially in this country. They're missing out on the most important thing. Because what is baptism? Baptism, simply put, is our death, our burial, and resurrection in union with Jesus Christ. It is the passageway of Christ's gift to the church through which we have not only entrance into the kingdom of heaven, but <clears throat> eternal life. You see, it's not just a photo op. You know, I'm going to get baptized, I'll become a member of this club, St. George's, or, you know, maybe I'll have some remission of sins here and there. It is so much more, because when we go down into the waters of baptism, what does that signify? St. Gregory of Nyssa, who was an early church uh, Cappadocian father, there are three Cappadocian fathers of the Eastern Church. They were well known, thought of, and still today in the Eastern Church, the Orthodox Church. They were Gregory of Nyssa, uh, St. Basil of Caesarea, and St. Gregory of. Uh, oh, I forget that <laughs> anyway, that's your homework assignment today. <laughs> anyway. St. Gregory of Nyssa said, you know, you know, when Jesus went down into the waters of baptism, it was like he went down into the filthy, sinful waters of the world. And he came out, when he came out, he brought up or lifted up uh, and purified the world from sin and cleansed it from and renewed it and began that redemption process. And so that's what we experience. It is more than just a photo op. It is more than just a becoming a member of a club. There are churches that teach that now. However, if we look at it, there are two deaths that occur in a baptism. The first death is, at our baptism, we go down into the waters with Jesus, we die with him, and that signifies and will become uh, manifest as far as what that means at his crucifixion. So we die with him on the cross, and then we are raised to new life with him and this, the new creation. There's the old Adam. Now the old Adam has been uprooted, and now we are in the new Adam, which is Jesus Christ. I want you to pay attention to one particular part of that gospel message this morning. I'm going to hold it up to you, and that is the, the scent of the dove. What does the dove signify other than the Holy Spirit? What happened in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, when God began to look upon the firmament, he looked upon the void? The Holy Spirit hovered over uh, everything, and therefore it was the Holy Spirit in the form of a mother hen, looking over his children. In other words, it was love that prompted God to make all things. And so the descent of the Holy Spirit as a form of a dove at his baptism, it signifies a new creation. What came out of Jesus' side on the cross? Water and blood, water for baptism, the Eucharist for having union with God, a reconciliation with God, a reunion with him, union with him. Did you know that in Jesus' day, 
that uh, when a young man had uh, betrothed his wife, you know, said, this is going to, will you be my wife? Yes. And so he would go and prepare a bridal chamber for his bride. Now, the bridal chamber was meant to mirror the temple at Jerusalem because just like that covenant with God, with, his Jewish, with the, the Jewish people, it was meant to be a marriage covenant. In other words, the bridal chamber is where we can have once again that true intimacy and personal relationship of love, infinite love with God the Father at the Holy Trinity. So you and I enter into that interpersonal love of the three persons of the Holy Trinity through our baptism. We did that first death. What is the second death? In other words, our baptism wasn't a once in a, once a time you know, remission of sins and that's it. And then 40 years later, 80 years later, I'll claim in my insurance, uh, you know, insurance, uh, <laughs> what do you call that? Fire insurance and I'm up to heaven. We're missing out on all the good stuff in between here and when God calls us home. And that means that we die to sin daily and we renew our, we are, our new life in the resurrected Christ. We have that new life in him and we have communion with him. And so being raised each day into that new life, eventually our bodily resurrection will occur later at some point. But we have this new life. So how many of you, let me ask you this question, have kept your New Year's resolution thus far? I, you have engineered, you're very good. I think I kept mine the second day, and that was too uh, I promised myself no more pumpkin pie. But the thing is, you know, I have hope, because I know, well, Jesus, I can't do this on my own. I surrender to you. Please work through me. Overcome those temptations, those sins, those weaknesses, my flaws, my defects of character, whatever you want to call them. We have hope, because in Jesus, we can do those things. Let me give you an example of saints of the past. The Cistercian monks, man, they lived a harsh life in medieval Europe. What did they do? They performed the, agri the agricultural revolution of the world because they drained the swamps of Europe and they planted crops, which led to the agricultural revolution. It was a miracle. But you know what? These men, they had little inadequate food, poor shelter. They had they were often in the cold. They worked all day. They prayed all day. They had little in the way of material sustenance. But what they did have, as St. Thomas Aquinas said, they had that vision, that knowledge, that epiphany, that salvation is for mankind to know his end, which is God. And so that's what kept them going. And they had the zeal. This Once they experienced the infinite love of God, that's the secret of the saints, then your life changes forever. You truly enter into that kingdom of heaven. And so may it be our... May God's blessing be upon us that we might experience what those things experienced when Jesus received that wonderful affirmation from his Father, Thou art my well-beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He means that for each of us too, because we are part of his body. We are in him and through him, and so therefore he can say to us, as long as we strive to surrender to his will, to abide in him and he in us, then we too can hear him say, Thou art my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Let us remember the way it's written in the Acts of the Apostles, where Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive.
This holy sacrifice is offered to the greater glory of God, and I ask that you please pray um, for our upcoming uh, Bible Club um, uh, beginning at uh, Eisenberg Elementary School. So please keep that in prayer, a diligent prayer. Also, we pray for all those suffering around the world, in particular in the Middle East, in Ukraine, as much so, uh, from the uh, ongoing conflicts in those regions. Please pray for First Choice Pregnancy Center here in Las Vegas and those in crisis pregnancy. We also pray for those grieving the loss of loved ones, especially within our parish family, uh, for uh, Jerry Bates. We pray for her. She continues to grieve. And also Cora Rippo for her husband, John. I also ask your prayers for those who are ill, who are suffering illness, uh, Jenny Hope, and she undergoes tests uh, uh, for, we pray for an improved health for her. Also, Phil Colson, who has entered into hospice care at this time. Pray for Ellen, uh, his wife, as she tends to him. Also, Aurora, Bre uh, Aurora St. John is under the weather, so please pray for improved health for her, too. Let us pray for all those in need in our parish bulletin prayer list. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, especially Archbishop Schultz, Bishop Hansen, Bishop Ashman, Father David St. John, Deacon Hope, uh, myself, uh, and Abel Wilson, postulate to holy orders, and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially <clears throat> to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, walking from henceforth in God's holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter 
serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and it institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, 
we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, <laughs>
presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. Let speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. Let speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my room. Let speak the word only. And my soul shall be
Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And just assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.